In this video, I'm going to take you through my process of drawing a cavernous dungeon map, the layer of the Edder Cap. Yeah. So in my last video, I drew a map of a little region of my D&D &D world where my players have gone to build a home base, but also get rid of a giant spider problem in the area. The deal is they get rid of the giant spiders, they get to purchase this piece of land for one copper piece as a bargain. And so they went into this spider web filled cavern and defeated a bunch of spiders and their leader, their sort of shepherd creature, this Edder Cap. So even though I already ran the adventure for my players, I thought it would be super fun to create this map. And then in the next video, I'll draw all the monsters and release this as a little encounter that you can use with the map and the miniatures and everything you need to run this little Edder Cap layer adventure. All right, so let's jump right into creating this cavernous dungeon map giant spider Edder Cap layer. All right, let's talk tools. So for this drawing, I am going to be working on a piece of eight and a half by 11 non-photo blue grid paper. So it's like normal grid paper, only the grid lines are very light blue, and that is to help make them disappear when I scan this map in. Not totally necessary, but it's a big help if you want to digitize your map drawing. Just a regular mechanical pencil and a white vinyl eraser. I have a jelly roll gel pen for the little details and the webs. And I'm gonna be using a Kuretake brush pen. I'll have a link below to where you can find this brush pen. The thing that's cool about this one, you can hold it upright and get a really thin fine line or tilt it, press down harder to get a thicker line, you know, get some variation in there. I find this really fun to use on maps because you can draw the details inside the map and then also get a really nice thick outline all with just one pin. But all that being said, you don't need any of these fancier tools to draw your own map. I always want to encourage you to make your own maps and hopefully you can get some good instruction out of these videos, but I really want to say the tools don't matter. Use whatever you got and you can make a cool map with a pencil or crayons and a regular sheet of paper. Okay, so I'm starting off just getting a rough idea of how this map is going to be laid out with pencil right on top of the graph paper. So this editor cap layer is pretty simple. It's just three rooms connected by tunnels, but I want to get it all laid out and drawn in pencil first just so I can be extra confident when I go into ink with my brush pen and make it a more final illustration. Even though this is a top-down view of this cave, I am putting in a little bit of isometric stuff in there. I'm making the cave walls sort of go up from the back side of the cavern. And this is really just a way for me to show the webs, all the webs that are lining the walls. Woo, it's thundering. <laughs> Really just a way for me to show all of the webs lining the walls and ceilings and floor of this spider cavern, which you'll see later on. Once I feel confident enough with the pencil artwork, then I can move on to actually drawing everything in ink. So I'm using the brush pen to sort of have thinner and thicker lines that I like. I always like to have the outline of whatever map be the thickest line so it kind of contains everything and then the elements inside based on how important they are get smaller and smaller. So little kind of details are the thinnest lines and stuff like all of these stalagmite and stalactites will be a sort of medium weight line. So while I'm inking this, let's talk about the story of this Edder Cap layer. We'll talk about the story and it starts thundering and lightning outside. <laughs> so this giant spider encounter was meant to be taken care of in one session. So this cavern is made up of three rooms. So the first big room in this cave is where all the giant spiders hang out, where all the webs are lining the ceiling and floors and walls. And there are bodies uh, hanging from the ceiling. They're all 
wrapped up in webs. As soon as the party walks in, they see these dangling, webbed up humanoid figures, and as soon as they step on the webs inside the cave, a bunch of giant spiders instantly attack. So in my game, I wanted to introduce a new character, Olo, a Furbolg, that is gonna help my players get their home base set up in this area. So he is one of the people wrapped up in the webs and he, he's clinging on to life, he's almost dead. So the players rescue him. So in the other hanging web people, <laughs> so there's a couple that are like completely decomposed sacks of jelly, gross slime. Ugh. And then there's a couple that aren't decomposed but still dead that have some fun magic items for my players. I figured because this is a cave filled with spiders, there's not exactly gonna be a bunch of treasure. So this is my way of getting some fun treasure in. And the, the players get it right up front, not at the end of this encounter. So once the players deal with this room, they can move down the tunnel. On the right, there is a room that has a natural spring coming up and is filled with spider eggs. And here again, as soon as the players enter the room, see the spider eggs, a swarm of spiders bursts out and attacks them. So when I ran this, instead of having just another spider fight, I ran it as a skill check. I described it as the players getting swarmed with all of these baby giant spiders. <laughs> so like, regular size spiders climbing all over them. They had to use their abilities, combat or non-combat, to sort of get a certain number of successes before they are overwhelmed by this swarm of freshly hatched spiders. Once they easily handled that, uh, <laughs> my players moved on through the cavern. It is raining so hard right now. <laughs> They moved on through the cavern to the Edder Cap's actual lair. This room has a big cutaway crevice, uh, crevasse, <laughs> running through the middle of the cavern. Um, they can't see to the bottom, it goes into darkness. But there is a bridge made out of web running across it, and on the other side there is a a throne made of webs. But when they enter the room, they just see a, like, giant giant like a super giant <laughs> spider sitting on the throne but not actually the edder cap so the edder cap is up on the ceiling kind of crawling around stalking them as they enter and if the players move to the bridge across this ravine crevice thing in the middle giant wolf spiders will come out of the darkness and attack them as well so once the adventurers my players took care of all of the spiders and the edder cap and everything burned down all the webs they now have this cave and the surrounding area to build their base out of. All right, so I've finished inking the cave and this could be a perfectly good stopping point, but I wanna be able to use this as a tactical combat battle map. So I'm gonna put a grid in. Using this non-photo blue grid paper is super helpful. I'm just gonna use my Sakura Jelly Roll pen to trace over the grid. So I'll have this map linked below. If you just wanna use it for whatever, throw it into Roll20, print it out and use it. Absolutely feel free. In the next video, I'm gonna be drawing the giant spiders and the editor cap as miniatures, and then I'll put together a full collection of everything that has the description of all the encounters and miniatures and the map as well. So you should absolutely subscribe and hit the notification bell to be alerted when that video pops up. So yeah, now I have an awesome looking cavern dungeon, but it is missing all of the spider webs. So I'm gonna bust out my light box, put a sheet of regular white paper on top of my map, and draw spider webs on top. So you don't have to have a fancy light box like this. You can totally do the same thing just by holding the two sheets of paper up to a window with the sun shining through, or on a glass table, you can put a lamp or something underneath the glass table, and that works as well. Now I'm just drawing all these spider webs. Uh, I don't really have any plan. I'm just trying to fill up the walls. I'll scan everything in separately and then digitally put these spider webs on top of the map. So I don't usually like to get into super technical stuff on this channel. I find that if you have a super specific 
technical question, you can just type it into YouTube and somebody will have a super short tutorial on how to do something. But that being said, if you want to see my scanning and how I clean up these maps digitally, leave me a comment below and maybe I'll make a super quick video all about my scanning process because I, I think hand drawing a map and showing it to your players is amazing, but now more than ever, showing it to your players means putting it online. So let me know in the comments below if you wanna see my scanning process. The other thing I wanna mention is usually with these videos, I try and show you how easy it is to do this, this process. Interested in drawing your own maps, please, please, please check out the rest of the videos on this channel because I have a lot of great tips on how you can create your own maps with zero drawing ability. But because I'm making this map available for you to use, I wanted to sort of explore and try and figure out my own style of drawing maps. Through the process of working on this map, I realized that I reference Skull Fungus and Dyson Logos a little too much. I'm gonna link their social media in the description. Definitely go check them out. They're both fantastic map makers and you can kind of see how this map is a combo of the two of them. So my goal of trying to figure out my own style of map making not necessarily successful in this video, but that just means I have to keep making more and more maps. The thunder and the rain is insane right now. Um, very fitting for an Edder Cap layer, a dark spider-filled dungeon that you have to explore. You take, you take refuge from the, the rain and thunder in this cavern only to discover it's filled with giant spiders. <laughs> Okay, so I've drawn the base cavern map and I have a, an overlay of all of these spider webs. Now I'm going to scan them into the computer, play with some colors, and then we have the final map. Cap layer map complete. Link down to both versions of the map in the description. Please use it for whatever you want. Maybe don't sell it. That would be kind of rude, but uh, please use it for your games. If you end up printing this out or using it in Roll20, let me know. Hit me up on social media. And if this inspired you to draw your own map, Definitely, definitely hit me up on social media. I love, love, love seeing what you create. It super, super inspires me and makes me excited to, to keep creating these videos. All right, stay tuned for the next video where I'm gonna draw some spiders and the editor cap and turn all of this into a little single session adventure. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. See ya!